This is the Moto Edge 50 Pro and it launched in India in a super competitive segment. The launch price of this phone is 32,000 rupees and with offers you can get it under 30k. In the base variant you get a 68 watt charger in the box and in the 12 256 model you get 125 watt PD charger in the box. Okay so by now you must have already seen a lot of unboxings, first impressions but I'm sure there are still a lot of questions that are still unanswered. In this video I'm going to touch just the important pointers. I'll keep it short. Let's get started. First of all the Edge 50 Pro is a very good upgrade over the Edge 40. Here are all the upgrades it brings. A much improved display, a telephoto lens, a Qualcomm chipset that most people prefer, USB 3.1, NFC support, slightly bigger battery and a longer update cycle. But it also misses out on two things. Removal of the eSIM support and the UFS 2.2 storage compared to the UFS 3.1 in the Edge 40. And here comes the surprising thing. See, a lot of people were concerned about the UFS 2.2 storage and honestly, we were too. But when we ran the storage test benchmark, we found the storage speeds to be at par with the UFS 3.1 storage speeds. Here are the N22 storage test results of the Moto H50 Pro in comparison with the Nord CE4 with UFS 3.1 and the Nothing Phone 2A with UFS 2.2. And yeah, Moto has the highest scores here. In fact, it's much higher than the UFS 3.1 in the random read-write speeds and at par with UFS 2.2 in sequential speeds. And we ran this benchmark multiple times just to be sure and the results were always the same. But we did not want to base our results only on the benchmark scores. So we also ran some real world tests. First we transferred a 5GB file from one folder to another and as you can see the transfer speeds are same on the Edge 50 Pro and the Nord CE4. After that we transferred a much bigger 22GB file from one folder to another and as you can see the Edge 50 Pro was faster than the Nord CE4. We also tried launching games and apps and in Genshin Impact both the CE4 and the Edge 50 Pro open up the app at the same speed. After all the tests, Moto H50 Pro somehow comes at par with phones having UFS 3.1 storage. We also asked Motorola about this and they said it's because of the optimizations that they have done at their end. So that's what it is. I'm not justifying Moto's decision to go with UFS 2.2 rather than UFS 3.1 that they had in Moto H40. All I'm saying is that this is quite surprising. Apart from this one surprising thing, I also had certain pointers about this phone that I'd like to share in this video. First of all, the Snapdragon 7 Gen 3 chipset that the phone comes with is not the most most powerful in this segment but it's quite capable. It performs well in day-to-day -day usage and some casual gaming as well. In fact, we have seen the same chipset in Nord CE4 that is priced significantly lower than the Edge 50 Pro. So the processor is good but it doesn't stand out. In fact, there were also rumors that this will come with the Snapdragon 8 as Gen 3 but we have tested that chipset and if you want to know our thoughts, I'll drop a link to our video and you can check it out. Secondly, Moto phones are not known for cameras but the camera hardware on this phone is quite capable especially with the addition of the telephoto lens. However, However, Moto needs to do some more optimizations to fully use the camera hardware and produce extraordinary results. Here are the camera samples from the phone. It also supports 4K 30fps video recording and you can switch lenses while recording. I leave a Google Drive link so that you can check out the camera samples. And for those who are concerned about the smaller battery life compared to other phones, we got an SOT of 6 hours 43 minutes with heavy usage so it does last you a day quite easily and charges from 5% to 100% in just 19 minutes with 125W charger. Plus you also get flagship features such as the IP68 rating and the fast wireless charging which you don't see in any other phone in this segment. Lastly, with Hello UI, you do get some Additional features such as the new quick settings menu, custom fonts and icons, the Moto Unplugged feature to keep your phone usage in check, etc. So it could appeal to a lot of users. But if you ask me, I prefer Moto phones for the clean software experience. Plus, the UI requires a bit more optimization to make it more smooth. One last thing, Moto should definitely work on their updates because the Moto H40 is still stuck at Android 13. So on behalf of all the users, I'm requesting Moto to push updates faster. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, press that like button and share this video with your friends. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.